everybody, and welcome back to the Educator Colin Snap Channel. How you doing? So today we're going to be talking about Spider-Man 2099. It just came out. I was kind of waiting for this card to come out because it's the final piece of the move deck archetype that has really been promoted this season. And I kind of need this to talk about Ghost Spider. I need this to talk about, or I need it in the game to talk about, you know, Silk and the other move pieces because without this in the game, you don't really have that full breakdown of what move will be looking like going forward. So uh, it's an important card. Definitely something I want to talk about. My first impressions, what I think you should do with it, how it plays, how it feels, et cetera, et cetera. So let's... Let's begin. So first, of course, we're going to be talking about the card itself. So Spider-Man 2099 is a four energy, six power card with the ability, the first time this moves to a location, destroy an enemy card there. So there's a lot of caveats with this ability. Even though it's a four six, uh, you can only trigger this ability once and once only. So uh, you can't really do any magic or any manipulation to get it triggering more than once you can only trigger it once even if like let's say you bounce it back into your hand and then you play it again it's not and you move it again it's not going to trigger again it only has this one trigger requirement and then it's done so that's something you have to know i know there's some people who are and i was you know wondering as well whether you would be able to move it to multiple locations and then it will trigger and destroy a card in multiple times no it's locked to this only trigger once and that's it so that's something important i mean it makes sense that it's a it has decent stats if that's the uh breakdown and lockdown that you are required to have with it but generally um it seems to be a move piece archetype it also does seem to be a destroy piece archetype so those are the two um, I guess compositions builds that if you already play, this might be a nice piece into, but when it comes to, should I get this card? Should I, you know, spend my 3000 tokens for it? My overall reaction is going to be no, unless you already play either move, move archetypes pretty exclusively, or you play destroy archetypes pretty exclusively. I think in those two builds, this can have a place where you don't feel bad about picking it up. But if you're picking this up because it's flavor of the month, if you're picking this up because it's only 3000 tokens, et cetera, et cetera, I really don't think you're gonna have that much enjoyment of this card. It might be something you play for a little bit and then you stop playing uh, when something new comes out, something more fancy, or you just go back to having a more consistent, strong deck to build. Because there is a lot of limitations with this card. You can't easily um, splash it into everything. Zabu can help, but uh, unless you're playing those type of decks, it's really hard to make this card very usable in a lot of spaces so my my overall reaction is is you shouldn't spend your tokens on this unless you're a big move guy like molts for sure or you're a big destroy guy i think destroy could also just use this as well so unless you're playing those two type of archetypes i really wouldn't um jump the gun on this however i i do have some thoughts about the card and some even deck examples that you could maybe use that could actually be pretty strong. So um, let's get into it. So first thing we're going to be talking about is some of the synergies I would say that uh, could be pretty useful. So I have two groups, right? It's like move and destroy. So the that's a good deck name, by the way. <laughs> so the first um, the first part is just the move synergies. You have Iron Fist, you have Ghost Spider, you have Cloak, you have Doctor Strange, and you have Heimdall, right? These are really the most realistic ways to trigger Spider-Man 2099. I, I think some of the other move stuff doesn't really work as well, but you want things to be cheap because you can combo it with the Spider-Man 29. I actually don't think Doctor Strange is that good of a synergy. 
but I wanted to put it in anyways. I think the ones that cost two or less are a little bit better because like with Iron Fist with Ghost Spider, you can do it on the same turn, which is pretty good. Where Heimdall is just a big turn six. It like it doesn't it's not important for the twenty ninety nine, but it's like, oh yeah, I could trigger it that way without really having to go out of my way, which is important. And then the other synergies I would say are the destroyer archetypes, which is like Electra is just a replacement for like all destroyer. If you have, if your opponent has less things on the board, it's easier for Spider Man 29 to hit something very relevant, which is pretty important. There are some ideas of doing a lot of destroys in the same deck. And then you have Null, right? If you're going to destroy a lot of things, Null is always a big benefit, a big payoff for that. And then Thanos, I think, is something maybe underutilized. I definitely think. Spider Man 2099 could have a place in Thanos. I do have a Thanos example deck build for you guys, but it has Space Stone, right? So, Space Stone is something to activate the Spider Man 29 and destroy archetypes already like Thanos because you can kill Monger, you can kill all the stones, you can make death super cheap. So, I actually think like there is a world where Thanos is the preferred deck archetype for uh, Spider Man 2099. I could definitely see that happening. But it does have a lot of benefits there that I think could could definitely be utilized. So that's something interesting to talk about that we will follow up a little bit later. And then this section is just like things to take into account generally when you are playing this card. It's not necessarily weaknesses or stuff, but these are just things to be aware of. Obviously, destroy isn't like unpopular, so. If you're playing Spider-Man in a destroyer archetype, you don't get to control the destroyers. Where in things like uh, Shang-Chi, you do get to control exactly what you're destroying. Here you could destroy something that's not that beneficial for you and that could be pretty bad. Armor is also a pretty annoying counter if you if they want to protect things. It's like you still can't get through the armor. Cosmo is interesting because you can go through the Cosmo. So it is something that can help you get through those matchups the problem is like if you want to kill something in with protected by cosmo you could just hit the cosmo so it's not a safe counter right but it is something that you could think about the beast is just there for me if like if i forget that you can't beast and then play spider-man 29 and nine then destroy again you only get one trigger on the card so even if you bounce it after you destroy you don't get to do it again so that's kind of a little bit I, I I don't like that personally. I think it would be okay for you to play Spider Man twenty nine, destroy, like do something like um Ghost Spider Bounce or Ghost Spider Beast and then go like Spider Man Ghost Spider again and then destroy again. Like I'd be okay with that. But you can't really do that, so that's something to keep in mind. There's no synergy there. And then Shang Chi is just like there to be like it's it's part of that destroy engine right where Shang Chi does have lower power but you have more control in what you destroy so there's that argument like if you wanted to replace Spider Man Twenty Nine with Shang Chi I don't know if they're doing the same thing even though they have like kind of similar effects I think Shang Chi is is fundamentally a different card so it's hard to be like oh yeah just replace all your Shang Chi's with Spider-Man 2099 is in move decks. I really don't think that's going to give you the same success. And with move archetypes, right, Professor X in the middle lane is always a problem. So if you're playing against Lockdown, you also have to be aware of, like, that is something they can do to mess you up. And then Magneto is more of, like, Magneto can get countered by Spider-Man 29 if the opponent plays Magneto and you haven't, and you play Spider-Man 29 and it moves your Spider-Man 29, it's going to trigger and kill that Magneto. Or, you know, something on that Magneto board, but it, it's definitely a scary scenario if a lot of people are playing Magneto and you're playing Superman 2099, you could definitely take advantage of that. They'll probably stop playing Magneto after the couple games, but uh, you know, it's something there. And then Brood is just there for like, one of the weaknesses of this type of card is that it hits randomly, so if their opponent is playing a lot of minions, like Beast, uh, like not Beast, but uh, Bounce decks really do that, and you know, S Silver Surfer decks do that. You could really just not hit anything that's like that relevant, right? So you might turn the Spider Man 29 9 into a, like a 4 8 or a 4 9, which isn't bad, honestly, but it's not like game breaking. 
the amount of work you have to put into that is maybe not equal to the you know the reward structure there but those are just some interesting cards i want to talk about let's talk about decks right so you bought it you you picked it up anyways what can you build with it right i do i think i have some interesting decks that actually might be pretty viable for this card first one i want to talk about is a thanos destroy deck so i Th thanos already plays destroy and i and because of the space stone this spider-man 2099 is not a bad option to put in there right you can still play your shang chis you can still play all your other destroy stuff you just add a ghost spider which isn't even that bad of a of a deal to in this deck and then you can then you can just run this with double destroy a lot of destroy synergies you've got the venom you've got the carnage and you get all the one drops with the space stone with the death with the null i actually think this is probably a pretty viable spider-man 2099 deck this is the one i probably would be most excited to play if i if i picked up the card uh, so this is something you could definitely take a look at, right? You're taking like space stone is not a popular stone right now, but now you're making it have a use case. That's pretty good. So this is definitely something I would try if you picked up the Spider-Man card. Next up is just a generic, uh, move archetype. I'm not actually a big fan of it, but I had to put it in here. If you want to play generic move, uh, I just think, um, things like human torch are a little bit weak right now like there's there's decent amount of killmongers going on you do have the wave cloak interaction you have the ghost spider wave interaction to heimdall there's no like secondary play though it's always heimdall um if you're gonna wave so that one makes me makes me a little bit scared maybe i would replace a human torch with a uh, six drop or something like that that's something i could see but um move regular move archetype is something playable i'm not the biggest fan of it but i had to put it in here next up is something made by alex um you know one of the content creators good friend here he made a destroy uh a deletion deck i guess is more accurate than a destroy deck it, it just focuses on killing every single card in your opponent's <laughs> on your opponent's field which i think is kind of funny but i do think there's something here that makes sense uh you just get a lot of good power on the board every every all your cards are destroying your opponent's cards if your opponent's playing a card you kill it uh theoretically so that could do a lot of work here it's it's gonna be a little bit hard in the full like making sure everything fully works out but i see where a lot of the power can come from you've got the kingpin magneto you've got the gambit you've got the electra there's a lot of little things you can do um to to really mess with your opponent so i i think there's definitely something here this deck looks really fun also really annoying for your opponent but really fun for you so i could definitely see uh where the power comes from and how you take advantage of it so if you want to try it, you know, feel free. He said he had pretty good success with a deck like this. So, uh, you know, take, take, uh, go for it. Right. I haven't played it. I don't have the card, but it, it looks fun to me. Next up we have is, uh, this was the move deck I was playing before, except I had a claw instead of Spider-Man 2099. So generally I don't think that's going to like losing the claw is going to change anything and then you get the ability to destroy cards. So uh, it's generally like a very similar list of what I was playing. Uh, the Killmonger is just there for some tech cards. Let's get into bounce and, and, and whatnot. But you just get more ways to kill things. So this is more of a, of a Mize type of move deck, but with more synergies with the Spider-Man 2099. So... Definitely think you could run this and see how it feels. And then the last one I have is, uh, uh, it's a Zabu centered, uh, sp destroyed deck. So this is more focused on having a lot of four drops. There's not really any late game, but you do have the Zabu engine to play a lot of four cost cards for cheap. And then you have the, the miles, you have the Spider-Man, you have the dark, the dark Hawk synergies. So this is just a very cheap it's very similar to um i had like a a high evolutionary 
deck that was kind of like this where there wasn't any late game but you just had a lot of like powerful four cost cards this is very similar to that it's just instead of running high evolutionary engine you're running the move engine so definitely think this could also work out for you so even though you if, if you have this card you want to play something i definitely think there's probably something in here that's probably viable i i lean towards the thanos build i think that one's pretty cool and doesn't have too many difficulties like incorporating the spider-man 2099 but you know feel free to try any of these let me know if they work for you or so my overall thoughts is it's not really a card that's it's not like spider ham if you have 3k tokens and you have to choose between spider ham or spider-man 2099 definitely go for the spider ham i think that one is definitely um, much more impactful overall uh, over the course of you know multiple months but i do think uh it has potential so you know i wouldn't be surprised if there's a meta deck that includes this card but for now i don't think it's stand out enough for me to recommend it intrinsically like i did with spider ham uh, but we'll have to see what the future holds. So hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys have a better opinion of this card and you know, we'll see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Educated calling the snap. Once you watch him, you won't go back. He'll teach you tomorrow snap. Your skills will be improving. How you do I need to change the background. I've been using this for like two weeks. Educated, call and snap.